you're six meters from one wall of the house seen in this picture right here. Um, you want to toss a ball to your friend who is six meters from the opposite wall. The throw and catch each occur one meter above the ground. So everybody's six meters apart. I somewhat disagree with their labeling of this as a two. The other one was a three, but whatever. <laughs> this is sort of difficult. It's a good thing we're doing it then. Yes. Okay. So the house is only six meters wide. It's cool. So then it tells us uh, the height, right, at three meters and then a 45 degree angle. So this right here, 45 degrees, and this is three meters tall. Oof, I put a head on that guy. And this goes. He's throwing from a meter off the ground, is that what it says? Yeah, it says right at the, oh yeah, you can see it in the picture even. It says the throw and catch both, of them. both occur at one meter above the ground. That's an interesting measurement. Okay, what, oh man, we only did A for 46. <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah. Ooh, maybe that's why it was so easy. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, whoops. So. Okay, we can go back to that one. But real fast, all it is, is um, you have okay, we'll, we'll, we'll have to talk about it a little bit more, but what it's saying is that he varies from being 5 degrees oh, 5 degrees, not 15 degrees 5 degrees above and 5 degrees below. So would that change would that just change like the initial velocity? Um, I think it's saying keep, what are the lowest and highest speeds with which the ball might have left his hand? Okay. So yeah, it's just saying um, now you're using these two initials. You have a velocity initial x and velocity initial y. And then you're still trying to find the minimum. So you just take those two and then plug them into the equations? Yeah, a minimum and a maximum. Uh, we'll we'll have to go back and talk about it. I think. Okay. 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 So let's label what we know. Great. Okay. Mm -hmm. So x initial, y initial. X initial is one, right? No, zero. Mm -hmm. and y is one. And velocity x initial is something we don't know, right? Right. Okay. Velocity y initial. Okay. Mm. Also, something we don't know. Okay. Because we don't know the velocity at all. That's what we're trying to solve for is how fast. You have to throw it in what angle? Okay. Okay. What else? Um, time? Yeah. I don't think we know time either. So it's called what, zero. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. 
and then acceleration. Acceleration is in the x. We don't know. Or is it zero? Zero. Zero. Why is it zero? Um, so it's like a free fall problem. So you know that the only thing acting on it is gravity. When it's being thrown? Mm -hmm. after, like, after so after it's been thrown, it? it's up in the air, the only thing that's acting on it is gravity. Okay. And gravity only acts straight down. So most of the time I won't, if it's like someone's throwing something or if it's in the air, it will just be an acceleration in gravity. Yeah, unless you have something like this, where you're throwing it up a hill. Say this is 10 degrees. Then your best bet here, if, oops, if you're trying to figure out this distance, the best thing to do is tilt your coordinate axis so that this is x and mm -hmm. this is y. You'd actually probably put your y-axis over here at zero. You put it right here. But then gravity is acting straight down. Mm -hmm. You remember how we did that? We've done that once, right? Where we decompose gravity into an x and y. Yes, I think we did. Yeah. So that would that would be what you do. You tilt your axis, but gravity still acts in the same direction. So you have to draw it on here and kind of figure out what your x and y components. So this component what right here would be a y. And this one would be 8x. I get it. Okay. Because if you're throwing up a hill, then you're kind of throwing uphill, like. Oh, I get it now. The that, ball is being accelerated by gravity down the hill a little bit. So the a and the x tell us the acceleration in the x and mm -hmm. the y. Oh, that's cool. And they're super easy to find because the angle right in here is what? This is 10 degrees. Is it? It's not 10 too, is it? Yeah, it is. Cool. Yep, so it's 10 degrees. And there's geometry behind that. Basically, it has to do with perpendicular lines and the way they bisect each other. But yeah, we're not worried about the geometry. All we care about is that this angle is 10. So AY would be, and this, the full length of it is negative 9.8, right? Mm -hmm. So AY would be negative 9.8 cosine of 10 degrees. AX would be what? Negative 9.8 sine of 10 degrees. Perfect. Cool. So that's what you, you just have to watch out. If you're on an angle like that, then you will have an X acceleration because tilting your axis is the best way to do the problem. Okay. Okay, so acceleration in X is zero. Yep. Y is negative 9.8 meters per second. Okay, and x final is 18. Okay. And y final is 1. Again, right? Yep. Then velocity of x final, velocity of y final, I'll get rid of those still. And time, we still don't know. Now, what about this point right here? Is that, someone mentioned today about how right at its highest point, it's going to be half of what the length is. Is that right? Yeah, that's true, because your point, the point of your roof goes up right in the middle, right? So this right here basically bisects your length into two separate things. But why would it be important that we look at this point? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Because we can solve this problem. We could find out what the time it would take to throw it from one meter to one meter and what kind of angle we'd want, right? Mm -hmm. Problem is, there's a big house in the middle. Oh, 
So you could throw it at like 500 meters a second straight across and what you'll do is you'll punch a hole through your house mm -hmm. but you want to throw it over the top. Okay yeah that makes sense. So why don't we change our subscripts just a tiny bit and because now we've got three points we want to look at right? We'll call these zero or not. Okay. And we'll call these two so that we can call the middle ones one. Does the acceleration change at all? No. Yeah, so we can kind of just treat that as our total acceleration the whole way. But here we want to have x1, y1, vx1, vy1. How is this going to play into the equations if we have three different variables? So now we can look at just from here to here, from here oh. to here. Okay. So this portion and this portion. Okay. So we use the same exact equation still. So. Oh, and then we've got a time here too. Okay. Time one. Um, okay, so x1 is 9. Oh. Y1, is that 9 too? Or do we not know? So the Y1 is the top of the house, right? Because mm -hmm. you want the ball to just barely just touch the top of the house as it goes over. Yeah. Do we have to do some geometry? Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. So this one's six meters. And we want, okay, we want the, So let's draw our house over here for a second. So, oh, that's not a very good house, but pretend the point is in the middle. So this is 45 degrees. This is 6 meters. This is 3 meters. So we know it's at least 3 meters tall. Mm -hmm. And then we want to find that one right there to add to our 3 meters. Oh, okay. So you can just split the triangle in half. So three meters and three meters. And then do some kind of equation. So you can do, because we're told to find, we don't have the hypotenuse, but we have the adjacent. Mm -hmm. what we want? We want opposite over adjacent. Is it tangent? Yes. So tangent, 45, will equal our height. So opposite over adjacent? Mm -hmm. 3 tangent 45. 